So, the man over here, Hans Krebs, he was the discoverer of the citric acid cycle, which is also known as the Krebs cycle and the tricarboxylic acid cycle. And the purpose of this cycle is to harvest high energy electrons from the carbon food molecule. So it is a cycle because the first substrate is also the last substrate in the series. And what you have here is a simplified diagram. So this cycle is fed with a two carbon sugar, which is the acetyl coenzyme A. And in a series of reactions, you got the production of one, two, three NADH, one GTP, and one FADH2. So all these NADH and FADH2 are electron transporters, which will then release their high energy electrons to produce even more ATPs in another step known as the electron transport chain. Now let's look at the details of citric acid cycle. So to kickstart the cycle, an oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon compound, will interact with the two carbon acetyl coenzyme A to produce the six carbon citrate. So this process is known as condensation as it involves the joining together of two different molecules. And in this process, a water molecule is used to hydrolyze the thioester bond within the coenzyme A. And it is the release of energy from this process that drives the synthesis of citrate molecule. So citrate molecule itself is a stable molecule and less reactive. And we'll need the help of the enzyme aconitase to rearrange this molecule into isocitrate, which is basically an isomer of the citrate molecule, but it is more reactive and less stable. Then the reactive isocitrate molecule will undergo oxidative decarboxylation to form the 5-carbon alpha ketoglutarate molecule. So this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. So what it does is remove hydrogen and the high energy electrons from isocitrate and put them into an NAD positive, forming up an NADH molecule. And aside from this, this enzyme also helps to remove one carbon dioxide from the isocitrate. So as a result, you have the production of one NADH and one carbon dioxide from this reaction. Now similar reaction happens in the next step, where you also have the oxidative decarboxylation of the alpha ketoglutarate to form the 4-carbon succinyl coenzyme A. So in this process, you have the production of 1 NADH and also 1 carbon dioxide. But at the same time, you also have the addition of 1 coenzyme A as the energy released from this reaction is so huge to recruit back another thioester group. So this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. If you can remember, this process is very similar to the conversion of pyruvate into the 2-carbon acetyl coenzyme A by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase, which is also a multi-enzyme complex. And the presence of the thioester group has made succinyl coenzyme A a high energy molecule by which its hydrolysis can be used to make one GDP molecule. So one GDP is equivalent to one ATP. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme succinyl coenzyme A synthetase. And then succinate is converted into fumarate by another reaction of oxidation, which produces one FADH2. So why is it not NADH? Well, it is because that the energy released from this reaction is not high enough to form one NADH, but it is just sufficient to form one FADH2. So this step is performed and catalyzed by the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. And then fumarate is hydrated to form a malate molecule. So in this reaction, you have the addition of one water molecule because it is a hydration reaction, which is catalyzed by the enzyme fumarase. And last but not least, malate is oxidized back into oxaloacetate, which is another process of oxidation that produces one NADH. So with that, oxaloacetate can interact with another acetyl coenzyme A and restart the whole cycle again. So overall in this Krebs cycle, you have the production of three NADH, two carbon dioxide, 
which are originated from the two carbon in the S2 coenzyme A, one GTP, and one FADH2. So from one glucose you begin with in the glycolysis becomes pyruvate, and from pyruvate it becomes S2 coenzyme A, and eventually it becomes carbon dioxide molecule. So this is the complete oxidation of a glucose molecule. So oxidation means the losing of electrons. And where are those high energy electrons? Well, they are all captured in NADH and FADH2. Okay, now I would like you to link all these chemical reactions to the respective steps in the Krebs cycle. And let's look at the answers. Basically, you have two steps of oxidative decarboxylation, which produces carbon dioxide and NADH. And then you have two oxidation events, which produce one FADH2 and another NADH. A hydrogen step that produces malate from fumarate. A direct energy production by which you get a GDP production. The formation of a thioester bond, where you get the addition of one coenzyme A into alpha ketoglutarate, forming up the succinyl coenzyme A because this has formed a high energy compound molecule. And rearrangement of citrate into isocitrate, which increases the reactivity of the molecule. And last but not least, condensation, which is the step that combines both two carbon S2 coenzyme A with the four carbon oxaloacetate to produce a six carbon citrate molecule. Okay, here is a very quick recap of the overall process in the citric acid cycle. In the first step, you have the joining together of a 2-carbon and a 4-carbon sugar forming the 6-carbon citrate. It is then rearranged to make it unstable. Then 1-carbon is removed and you also have the generation of 1-NADH by oxidative decarboxylation. And you have another similar step to form the high energy compound which is succinyl coenzyme A which can be used subsequently in a direct energy production of a GDP molecule. Then you have the generation of 1-FADH2 and 1-NADH by oxidation. And last but not least, you have the regeneration of the oxaloacetate. So when we talk about the citric acid cycle, we assume that it is all about energy production and it's all about the breakdown of macromolecules into simple units, which is known as catabolism. But in fact, Citric acid cycle is a source of biosynthetic precursors such as nucleotides, amino acids, and even lipid molecules. A roundabout serves as a hub to integrate traffic from many different directions, and likewise, citric acid cycle also serves as a hub to integrate many biochemical pathways, which includes both catabolic and the anabolic pathway. So this diagram shows you how citric acid cycle can be used for the synthesis of many different molecules. Citrate, for example, can be converted into fat molecules, while alpha ketoglutarate can be converted to some amino acids and purines. For succinyl coenzyme A, it can be used to make chlorophyll and the heme group, while for oxaloacetate, it can be used to make many amino acids and different types of nucleotides. So you don't really have to memorize this diagram, but you just have to know that citric acid cycle is the source of biosynthetic precursors. So when the metabolites have been used up in the synthesis of all these different biomolecules, we need to top up these metabolites by the anaplerotic reactions, which refers to the reaction that generates metabolite intermediates. For example, the oxaloacetate is replenished by the carboxylation of pyruvate molecule by using this enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. So how do we control the citric acid cycle? Well, again, we depend on the regulation of enzyme activity. For instance, PDH or pyruvate dehydrogenase is inhibited by ATP, s coenzyme A, and NADH as these molecules symbolize a high energy state. 
so it would like to cut down the rate of reaction. On the other hand, the same enzyme is um, activated by ADP and pyruvate. So similarly, you have other enzymes over here, be it acetate dehydrogenase or alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. They are all inhibited by ADP, NADH, or any other molecule that symbolize a high energy state. Well, conversely, they are activated by ADP. So for information, again, these activator or inhibitor molecules are all known as E-factor molecules. They will bind to the allosteric side of the enzyme so that it can modify its activity. And last but not least, I would like to bring your attention to citrate molecule, which we have learned before that it is a molecule that will inhibit the glycolytic pathway. Because this molecule will signify that we have too much substrate down the line, so please stop production in glycolysis. Okay, here is what we have learned so far with regards to catabolism. First of all, we learned that in glycolysis, you have net production of two NADH and two ATPs per glucose molecule. And then in the Krebs cycle, you have the production of six NADH, two FADH2, and two GDP per glucose molecule. But where are the rest of the ATPs? Well, you have learned about that in our next lecture. Before we end the session, here is a very useful mnemonic for you to remember all the substrates in the Krebs cycle. For example, citrate is Krebs starting substrate for making oxaloacetate. So C is the first substrate, I is for isocitrate, K is for ketoglutarate, and so on. So from this lecture, what you have to remember are the names of the substrates, the names of the enzymes, and the types of different chemical reactions. But you are not expected to remember all the structures of the substrates and the detailed mechanism. So with that, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you.